Hey YouTube, this is Motocar here. Going to give you a little bit of a walkthrough as far as uh, remote starts go. Um, see a lot of videos out there showing you how to install them or how they're working, things like that. So I figure I can walk through before you guys actually get in the car. Give a little brief rundown as to what all these wires do. Um, this one here is a uh, 24921 uh, ready remote start. Uh, it's advertised as a do-it-yourself kit. You can see it's got, um, inside here, it's got some DVDs that you can watch. Um, we've got those videos posted on the YouTube channel as well. Um, this gives you a brief rundown on how to install, installation techniques, things like that. Um, it doesn't really give a good whole lot of details as far as um, what these actual wires do. Um, as you can see, this is going to be a, a single button remote start. Um, the car we're putting it in on is going to be a 1990 Mazda Miata. So it doesn't have any power door locks. And uh, we don't really have a need for it to be any kind of uh, you know, long distance range or anything like that. Um, for the most part, the car is very pretty close to us. So you can see here, it's in this connector here, it's pretty bare. There's a lot of pins that are missing um, that are normally filled in with other units from direct, like the Avatol um, 4103, the Python 413, things like that. So if we want to start here at the ignition harness, so we're going to have a couple wires here. Uh, you're going to see these two with the green fuse. These are going to be your 12 volt constant input wires. You're going to go directly to your ignition, um, like all these here. Um, but these first two here, typically what I do is for um, on my pre wire, what I'll do is I'll take one of these, cut it, and then splice it in to this one. So you have one less connection to make in the car. So you're going to have essentially turn two wires into one. And then you only install this wire. We'll go into the car. Um, so you got your 12 volt input here. And then move it along, solid pink. Let's see if I can get out of the way here. Solid pink with no stripe. This is your ignition input. Also at the key harness. Then you're gonna have pink white. This is your second ignition if your car has it. A lot of them do, some of them don't. Um, if you don't have second ignition based on the wiring diagram, you can go ahead and cap this, tape this off, make sure it doesn't have any uh, contact with anything under the hood. Then you're gonna have your purple wire. This is gonna be your starter wire. Um, if you were to have an alarm and remote start, a lot of times you'll have a green wire coming out of this harness as well. That's gonna be your starter interrupt. So one side will go key side, the other side will go to the starter side, but this is just remote start here, so this is gonna be all the connection to the starter wire. And then the last one of this is orange. This is gonna be your accessory input. So essentially what this one does is if when you turn your key and your radio comes on, but without the dash lights, that's what this is doing here. It's this wire energizing. Um, these two, the pink and the pink white, these two are when your dash lights come on. That's what's going to be turning the car on when you need to get activated. So moving along over here, we'll show you the back. Pretty bare. When you get over here, this is going to be the parking light jumper. Based on the polarity of your parking lights in the car, you might have positive trigger, you might have negative trigger. Um, the instructions will show you which slot it's supposed to be in. Um, you just, you know, take it out and slide it over one notch if you have positive or leave it as this for negative. And then loop it over here. This red, this is the red LED. Um, tied to that is going to be your push button here. So this is how you're going to access your menu features. Um, it's going to be a combination of key turns with the ignition as well as pushing and or push and hold this button. Is going to correspond to this LED flashing and give you a number of um, light light up so you can follow along as far as which selection you're in in the menu as well as what option you're choosing. There's a blank one here. This is going to be your antenna input. You can see we got the antenna here, and then there's a little part that sticks under the windshield. So always forget to plug this in. A lot of times, if you uh, Get it all installed, ready to go, and you forget to run the antenna, and you're wondering why your remote side doesn't work. A lot of times your antenna is plugged in. So over here, small pin harness over here. Let's see if we can get the colors on. So this is blue-white. This is going to be your status or defogger output. Um, if you got to use a immobilizer or addiction bypass, this is going to be the turn-on wire for that immobilizer. So um, like a lot of the newer cars, they're going to have, um, depending on what brand you get, XK06, some of the older modules, uh, like a 455 or a 555U, things like that. Um, once the remote start activates and turns on after you've hit the button, this wire gets energized, and this is what turns the bypass on right before remote start, so your car can think there's a key in the ignition. 
So the next one over is gray. You see it here, this gray wire. This is your hood pin, or if you have a uh, rollerball switch or a lot of outdated mercury switches under the hood. Um, even if you have a factory light, some uh, older Chevys will have an under, uh, under the hood light. You can tie this into that, so that way when the hood's up, it will start one activate. Then you've got the brown wire here. This is your brake shutdown. This is going to go to the brake switch up under the dash by your brake pedal. So when your car is remote started, um, if I were to open the door, get in and step on the brake without putting the key in, this is going to shut down the car. So that way people can drive away with it. It's a uh, purple white. This is your attack input. So you can run this out under the engine compartment. Um, this one's, depending on the car, you can use coil packs or you can use sometimes uh, fuel injectors. If you uh, look at all, say like on a four cylinder, um, a lot of these cars will have an uncommon wire color at the fuel injector. So you say you've got, you know, cylinder one's got, you will see red, white, blue, and then the next cylinder is going to be red, white, green. You're going to tie into the white wire on the first one or the green wire on the second cylinder because it can be the uncommon wire color between all of your fuel injectors. That's the one you'd tie this one into. Um, a lot of these remote starts, they have something called virtual tack, or essentially what it does for remote starts, and then it senses the voltage in the car, and then... So it starts the car, reads the voltage, and then after a set amount of time, it'll read the voltage again. If it's, you know, 12, 13, 14 volts, that means the remote start knows it started. If it's under that, the remote start will turn off and then it'll try starting the car again. So that's one of the many features you can change as far as in, in programming with that uh, push button. And then black, pretty simple, is going to be, uh, this is the black and gray. This is your neutral safety. So... A disclaimer a lot of people will just ground this wire um, essentially what this needs to see is a ground input for the remote start to start um, a lot of people don't feel like running this wire to the parking brake which is what it's for or a neutral safety switch that's in the car um, essentially what the purpose of this wire is is that um, it knows that the car has got a parking brake up so that way if for whatever reason the car happened to be in gear or if you know a parking lockout failed it's got a backup as far as to when the remote start starts cranking, the car doesn't creep forward. Um, some people put it straight to ground. Some people put it on a switch. Um, that way you can uh, circumvent or bypass that parking brake wire, but this is essentially what it's for. Um, this has to see ground in order for the remote start to activate. Uh, white wire here. This is your parking lights. Um, pretty simple. It's going to be similar tied into the jumper that's on the back here of the box. Um, hook this to the parking brake wire. Black's going to be your ground. Um, white with a blue stripe, this would be like an activation input. So, so you've got, uh, got an alarm that has a channel on it. You can actually um, use this module in conjunction with some sort of other alarm that has a, an output on that remote. And this will trigger the remote start to start um, using that other device's remote um, that we don't have to carry to you know, this remote as well as another remote. Um, so then we have these two, green, white, and then green, black. These are, um, these are going to be factory alarm disarm and factory alarm rearm. So a lot of Toyotas, um, the factory alarm would go off if the car has been remote started and the doors are locked. So essentially what these do is right before the car remote starts, it pulses the unlock wire. Um, so that way, or it'll, you know, sometimes the door locks will unlock, the car remote starts, and then rearm, it'll send a pulse to lock the doors again. So that way it's, uh, some, some cars that actually lock and unlock the doors, some cars that actually just deactivates the factory security system and then reactivates it after the car has been remote started. I'm um, essentially just to uh, shut the factory security system off for a brief moment while the car starts. Um, so that's pretty, I know it's a lot of information right off the bat, um, kind of all at once. So again, ignition wires here, then you're gonna have push button antenna, your jumper, parking light jumpers in the back here. A lot of these connections typically will go under the hood or under the dash over here. And then parking brakes, ground, activation input, factory alarm disarm. If um, you got any questions, go ahead and throw them up in the comments section. Get back to you as soon as I can. Catch you in the next video.